Would you like to grow a plant that is as much at home in the greenhouse over a cold winter as it is at room temperature in the house? That's large enough to make a statement and weed enough to be a talking point when anybody comes to visit. That's also readily available and reasonably cheap. If that sounds of interest to you, then keep watching. And we are in. So, continuing the theme of weird plants you can grow in your house, today we're having a close look at another begonia, and this time it's all about the hers. Just as an aside, one small point I've wondered about is why the orchid family, the orchidaceae, there are multiple genera. Phalaenopsis, Zygopedalum, Dendrobium, just to name but three. But in Begoniaceae, there only appears to be a single genus, i.e. Begonia. You know, Begonia this, Begonia that. Well, that's because there are only two genera in Begoniaceae. One is Begonia, obviously. The other is something called Hillibrandia, which I'd never heard of. The genus Begonia actually contains around 2,000 plus species and counting, whereas Hillibrandia only contains one. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'd always wondered that. Perhaps you have two, so now we know. So, just like Begonia melanobulata, this particular one that I'm going to show you is endemic to Vietnam. It's a fairly recent discovery, and initially it was named after its finder, Murray Sizemore. But I should point out that there's been some confusion over that pretty recently as to whether it is a new species or if it was actually already known in China. Subsequently, it appears, and it was decided, that it was in fact the exact same plant as Begonia longiciliata, which is widespread throughout China. Because of this, and plant enthusiasts will know this is really infuriating, but it has actually been renamed to Begonia longiciliata with a synonym of Sizemoria. And you'll still find both of those names in common use throughout the internet. You'll also see it loosely referred to as a rex type begonia although it's a species in its own right it isn't actually descended from begonia rex i think but it can be treated culturally as if it does for the most part on a side note nothing to do with this particular plant but i've heard lots of people refer to the word species for example i have a begonia species but the word species is both singular and plural so it should have been i have a begonia species just a little pet peeve of mine thought i'd just mention it Okay, so the word longiciliata refers to the hers, cilia. And goodness, they are rather long. It apparently uses these to absorb moisture from the atmosphere of the forest. And apparently this also enables it to tolerate periods of drought. I believe the leaves can get up to a foot across in the wild and mine aren't that far off. I've also read it has pretty flowers of which I'll try and find a photo and put that on screen for you. So despite its weirdness, this is reputedly a very easy plant to grow and my experience has seconded that. I've only had mine a few months now, but as you can see, it's grown massive. Now, perhaps, its most surprising attribute is the fact that despite its tropical origins, it can actually go down to very low temperatures, almost zero degrees Celsius, probably due to its mountainous home where it can grow up to 900 meter elevations. A guy called Les Hastwell, who's a begonia hybridizer, and one of the two gents that helped me with the information about growing this plant, told me that his has survived down to a chilly, ready for this, minus five degrees Celsius, although he does take precautions to make sure that actual frost doesn't form on the leaves. Not sure how he does that, but you'll have to ask him about that. But for the best growth, it actually enjoys room temperatures. So you can grow it in the greenhouse and you can also grow it in the house as well. It prefers humidity to be above 40%, but that isn't really a lot, especially if you live in the UK, where it tends to be upwards of 70 anyway. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see that it's growing at the side of the pot. Bernard York, who's another accomplished begonia hybridizer that helped me with the information, he also mentioned that they do seem to do this, no matter what you do, whether it's in a basket or a pot. So mine isn't actually unique. The media, usual begonia media, moisture retentive without being absolutely waterlogged, but pretty well drained. It's also very easy to propagate like most begonias. In this case, you can either divide the rhizome or you can do leaf wedge cuttings. A point on propagation, apparently the genes from this plant are particularly strong, which made hybridizing a lot more tricky than usual. However, success eventually came. So here are up on screen some of Bernard's lovely hybrids that came from Begonia longiciliata. And I'm sure if you want to get hold of any of those, I'll put a link in the description and you can head over to his uh, web page or Facebook page or whatever it is he has sent me. You can get all the usual pests, mites, thrips, 
aphids, vine weevil and so on. Not sure how they'd fight their way through all those herds though, but in my recent attack of mite, this was one plant that actually stayed free of them, I'm happy to say. On the plus side, I do believe that they are resistant to moles and mildews, which is unusual in a begonia. It enjoys regular feeding and it prefers to be in bright shade like the majority of Magonias, certainly the Magonias that I grow. I know there are two particular groups that do like the sun. As for watering, wash it when it's dry. Won't tolerate sitting in water reputedly, although mine did for five days, as we know from my recent video. So if this has sparked your interest in some of the amazing Magonias out there and you're unsure which to grow, take a look at this recent tour I did of all my begonias, although I have added a few more since then, but that's what happens once you start collecting these things. Please tell me in the comments if you grow any unusual houseplants, as sometimes I feel like I might be missing out. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.